Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel, where I talk about the most trending topics in politics. Today, I'm going to discuss the latest developments in the ongoing investigations and lawsuits involving former President Donald Trump and his associates. As you may know, Trump is facing multiple legal challenges from various jurisdictions, ranging from criminal charges to civil suits. In this video, I will give you a brief overview of some of the most important cases and what they could mean for Trump's future. Let's start with the case that has been making headlines recently, the Mar-a-Lago Classified Documents case. This case stems from an incident that occurred in January 2021, when Trump was still in office. According to the indictment, Trump and three of his associates his former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, his former Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, and his former lawyer Sidney Powell conspired to obtain and disclose classified information related to the 2020 election and the January 6 Capitol riot. The indictment alleges that they did so in order to undermine the legitimacy of President Joe Biden's victory and to incite further violence against the government. The indictment also accuses them of obstructing justice by lying to federal agents, destroying evidence, and tampering with witnesses. The charges include conspiracy, unauthorized disclosure of classified information, obstruction of justice, false statements, and contempt of court. If convicted, they could face up to 20 years in prison each. Trump and Flynn have pleaded not guilty to the charges and have denounced the case as a political witch hunt. Meadows and Powell have not yet entered their pleas, as their arraignments have been postponed due to various reasons. Trump has also complained that FBI agents seized his passports during a raid on his Florida resort, mar lago He claimed that this was a violation of his rights and that he needed his passports for travel purposes. However, Legal experts have told NBC News that this could spell major trouble for Trump, as it could indicate that he is a flight risk or that he has ties to foreign entities. The Mar-a-Lago case is not the only one that Trump is facing in Florida. He is also being sued by two women who accuse him of groping them at his golf club in 2016 and 2017. The women are seeking unspecified damages for battery, assaults, intentional infliction of emotional distress and defamation. Trump has denied the allegations and has called them politically motivated. His lawyers have tried to dismiss the case or delay it until after he leaves office, but the judge has rejected their arguments and ordered them to proceed with discovery. Moving on to New York, where Trump is facing another criminal case that could potentially land him in jail. This case is being led by Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance Jr., who has been investigating Trump's business dealings for more than two years. In July 2021, Vance's office indicted Trump's company, the Trump Organization, and its chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg, on 15 felony counts of tax fraud, conspiracy, grand larceny, and falsifying business records. The indictment alleges that they engaged in a scheme to avoid paying taxes on millions of dollars worth of compensation and benefits for Weisselberg and other employees. Weisselberg has pleaded not guilty to the charges and has refused to cooperate with prosecutors. Trump has also denied any wrongdoing and has called the case a continuation of the witch hunt against him. However, Vance's office has indicated that this is only the first set of charges in an ongoing investigation that could implicate more people and entities associated with Trump. In fact, in September 2021, Vance's office issued a second set of charges against Trump himself, along with Weisselberg and two other executives, Matthew Calamari Sr. and Matthew Calamari Jr., the new charges include 19 additional counts of tax fraud, conspiracy, grand larceny, falsifying business records, 
offering a false instrument for filing, scheme to defraud and criminal tax fraud. Trump and the other defendants have pleaded not guilty to the new charges as well. They are scheduled to appear in court on December 6th for a hearing on various motions filed by their lawyers. If convicted on all counts, they could face up to 15 years in prison each. The New York case is not only a criminal matter, but also a civil one, in addition to Vance's office. New York Attorney General Letitia James is also investigating Trump's business practices. For possible violations of state laws, James has been conducting a civil probe into whether Trump and his company inflated the value of their assets to obtain loans and tax benefits and deflated them to reduce their tax liability. James has also joined forces with Vance's office to share information and resources in their respective investigations. James has not yet filed any charges or lawsuits against Trump or his company, but she has issued several subpoenas and obtained millions of pages of documents from them. She has also interviewed several witnesses, including Weisselberg, Calamari Sr., Calamari Jr., and Trump's son Eric. James has said that her investigation is ongoing and that she will follow the facts wherever they lead. Finally, let's look at some of the other legal battles that Trump is facing across the country. In Georgia, Trump is under criminal investigation by Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis, who is looking into whether he tried to interfere with the state's election results and pressure officials to overturn his loss to Biden. Willis has been examining Trump's phone calls with Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger and other officials, in which he asked them to find enough votes to make him the winner. She has also convened a grand jury and issued subpoenas to obtain documents and testimony from various witnesses. Willis has said that she expects to present her case to the grand jury by the end of the year. In addition to Willis, Trump is also being sued by Raffensperger and Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, who accuse him of defaming them and violating their civil rights by spreading false claims of election fraud and inciting violence against them. Trump has countersued them, alleging that they violated his constitutional rights by certifying Biden's victory and refusing to investigate his allegations. In Michigan, Trump is facing another lawsuit from the state's Attorney General Dana Nessel, who is suing him and 16 of his allies for attempting to overturn the state's election results. By submitting fake slates of electors to Congress, Nessel has charged them with 19 counts of election fraud, conspiracy, perjury, forgery and racketeering. The defendants have pleaded not guilty and have challenged the validity of the lawsuit. In Washington, D.C., Trump is being sued by several members of Congress and Capitol Police officers who blame him for inciting the January 6th riot that resulted in five deaths and hundreds of injuries. The plaintiffs allege that Trump violated federal laws that prohibit conspiring to interfere with civil rights, inciting violence, aiding and abetting assault and inflicting emotional distress. Trump has denied any responsibility for the attack and has argued that he is immune from civil liability as a former president. These are just some of the most prominent legal cases that Trump is facing right now. There are many more that I have not mentioned, such as the ones involving his taxes, his charities, his inaugural committee, his social media accounts, his sexual misconduct allegations, and his family members. It is hard to keep track of all of them, as new ones keep emerging every day. But one thing is clear, Trump is in deep legal trouble and he will have to spend a lot of time, money and energy to defend himself in court. What do you think about these cases? Do you think Trump will be convicted or acquitted? Do you think he will run for president again in 2024? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more updates on politics. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.
Bye.